friends who met on the street, too. The drive to Virginia took ten hours, and it was evening when they arrived at the small white shingled house where Mr. Lawrence's mother lived. She walked out the front door with tears streaming down her face as she took her son into her arms. For all the years he was missing, she said, she's looked for him wherever she went. It's a wonder I wasn't killed, she said, because every time I saw someone on the street, any skinny little man walking along the side of the road, I would wonder if it was Raymond, and I would turn to look real hard, and I would nearly run into something and kill myself. Randy Kennedy One year later, Vincent Jones went back down to Virginia to visit Raymond Lawrence. The reporter, Randy Kennedy, went along too, and this is what he wrote. Portsmouth, Virginia Some things about Raymond Lawrence have changed hardly at all in the last year. He is still as thin as a pool cue, his fingers long and spindly. He still gets uncomfortably quiet and stares straight ahead when people start talking too much about his past. He still walks slowly and with a limp because of the missing toes that frostbite stole from him on the streets of Manhattan not so long ago. But some things have changed a lot. Now he has a home in the tiny bedroom off the living room in his mother's house. And he has not had an alcoholic drink, even though, like most alcoholics, he fights the desire to drink almost every day. He has learned to drive and scored a perfect test on his Virginia driver's test. Perhaps most important of all, he is playing the piano again, at first, his fingers trembled, and his memory failed him, but now his playing is beautiful and poetic and secure. He has a job, too, as assistant music director at a nearby church, and has not missed a service since he began. On a recent Saturday afternoon, a reporter went to visit Mr. Lawrence and his mother, accompanied by Mr. Jones, who had also not seen the man he calls my buddy Raymond for an entire year. Mrs. Lawrence was in the midst of making dinner, barbecue chicken, collard greens, rice, and the house was filled with the warm smell of food. Mr. Lawrence, glasses perched on the end of his nose, was poring over some songs for a church service the next morning. The tiny living room, where one keyboard sat last year, is now dominated by two large keyboards and two bulky black amplifiers that take up more room than the couch. If I didn't stop him, said his mother, Raymond would have keyboards stacked up to the ceiling in here. That Saturday, as the three sat together again, they seemed to forget their troubles. Mr. Lawrence, who rarely lets anyone see how he is feeling, hugged Mr. Jones as he squeezed through the door. Look at you, Mr. Jones said. Just look at you, Raymond. You look fine. The two men began to talk like old friends about deer hunting, horse racing, and truck driving, the last of which Mr. Lawrence had done for a living in more states than he can now remember. Mr. Lawrence, who never laughed when he lived on the streets, because there was little to laugh at, was joking and smiling. And then, as he always seems to do when company comes over, Mr. Lawrence sat down to play the piano. The year before, at church, 
Mr. Jones had asked his friend to play his favorite hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Mr. Lawrence remembered and began to play it once more. His back curved over the keyboard, his eyes clenched shut, as if in a trance.